Welcome to another episode of completing a Stuart triple expansion engine. This one's part 43. Fitting the cylinder cladding. A job I do not like doing very much as it can be quite difficult to get it right. Here's the engine on the bench with the Christmas card template on one side of it. All I have to do using the template that I made and some of this stuff is transfer the positions of the holes on the template onto this piece of metal. What is this piece of metal? Well, it's some stuff you buy from Stuart Models. It's anodized aluminium. You have to be very careful with it because it marks incredibly easily. I need to cut this piece of metal to the correct length and the hole that you can see in the corner of it was just a test that I did. By holding the Christmas card template on top of the piece of metal, I scribed a line where I need to cut it. You can cut this stuff with a pair of scissors, but it distorts as you cut it. I'm doing two things here. I'm using a set square to make sure the cut's going to be at 90 degrees by applying more pressure with the scriber and making the line a bit more visible. Once upon a time, this anodized metal from Stuart Models was made from steel and it was a lot stronger. This aluminium is very soft and marks really easily. This is a Clark metal worker, a very useful tool to have in the workshop, and at the bottom it has a guillotine. Please note, I removed the guide that normally covers the blade for two reasons. One, so I could see what I was doing, and two, so I didn't mark the metal. This very useful small guillotine cut the metal perfectly, as you can see here. It's important, though, to make sure that the blade is properly adjusted. It wasn't originally when I first received the machine, but now it's fine and I'm putting the guard back in place. For the next part of this episode, I needed something from the house, and I was quite surprised to see it snowing. I was going to say I'm going outside in a maybe some time, but it didn't take long at all. I'm going to show you what I've bought. These are cylinder drain cocks or cylinder drain taps, and I normally buy these from a company called 21st Century Steam which is run by Chris Lockwood, a friend of mine. I phoned him to order some a while back, but they never arrived. And despite some emails and various attempts at phone calling, I couldn't get through to him. So I bought these via eBay. And very nice they are too. The seller's name is on screen at the moment. These drain cocks are quite different to the ones I normally use. The ones that I used to buy from 21st Century Steam were always quite dull and looked like they were machined from castings. Either way, as long as they work, I'm quite happy. Here's a comparison between the two types. The one on the left is one of eight that I've just bought via eBay. And the one on the right is the last one that I have that I bought from my friend Chris at 21st Century Steam. I temporarily fitted the drain cocks to the engine, and even though the bottom ones are the wrong way up, you get the idea. They really do look quite good. As you can see, I need six of these for the triple expansion engine, but I did buy eight. I'll leave the other two in their plastic bags and put them in my box of drain cocks. You can never have too many bits and pieces for drain cocks because they do break occasionally. I am of course stalling. I really do need to get on with the job, but I'm not looking forward to it. For transferring the hole positions from the Christmas card template to the anodized piece of aluminium, I'm using an old needle file that broke and I ground the end to a point. I find this much better for scribing lines on anodized parts because the anodizing is very hard. Here is something that I definitely do not recommend. I only did it for the video. I used a center punch, but as you can see, the center punch is distorting the aluminium and it's not looking too good at the moment, but keep watching, you'll see how it works out in the end. I'm going to use my small Proxon drill press. The drill bit that's currently in it is a 3.1mm drill bit and it's not sharp at all. When I tried drilling through the aluminium sheet using this it just made it get hot. Luckily there is a doctor in the house, a Drill Doctor 750X. This is a great machine, I really do like it. And this is not sponsorship, I bought this via Amazon for the full retail price. It's very easy to use, you loosely place the drill bit in the chuck. Then you fit the chuck into the holder. You press a lever on the top to open two spring-loaded arms which grip the drill. The drill needs to be loose in the chuck to start with because the two spring-loaded arms lock the twist drill into the correct position. Once the twist drill is in the right position you can then tighten the chuck to hold it firmly and remove it from this area of the machine. Then you fit the chuck into this part of the machine. Then you switch on the motor. 
The next thing to do is just rotate the chuck a few times until the diamond cutter inside the body of the machine sharpens the drill. What could be simpler? In no time at all, this 3.1mm drill bit is just as good as it was when I first bought the set. This 750X drill doctor is very easy to use, and very simply you can change the angle at which you grind the drill bit. Now once I put this back in the drilling machine, I'm going to have to be very careful, because it really is going to cut the aluminium, as you can see here. These holes will need to be a good bit bigger than the 3.1mm or 1 8 holes that I'm drilling currently. You can see how I'm really having to control the aluminium. As a starting point, the main thing is that the hole is in between the ring that I've drawn with the file. It's not important whether it's in the middle or not, as long as it stays within the constraints of the ring. I could of course be more professional and more engineering like and put this in the milling machine and cut the holes that way using either a twist drill or a milling cutter. To make it work I think I would have to use something like double sided tape because I can't clamp this to anything. And if I did do it that way then removing the double sided tape would possibly distort the metal. It's very thin, very weak. Here I'm dicing with death there is something seriously wrong with my bandsaw. The blade guide has broken. In fact, very shortly I'm going to rectify this problem and make a new part for the machine. This shows what you can do if you put your mind to it though. I'm just being very gentle with the machine, controlling the blade and making it go where I want it to go. One slip and the job will be scrap. Once I've finished this job, I heaved a sigh of relief. I mean, just look at the blade. I don't know how I managed to do this. Here, I'm cleaning up the sawn edges using a small needle file. It's time to remove the temporarily fitted drain cocks and try the part in position. And the first thing I noticed was it was a little bit tight, so it was back over to the bandsaw to lengthen one of the slots. Then the piece of cylinder cladding fitted in position. This is not going to be easy because the piece of cladding has to be bent to fit around the low pressure cylinder and then the positions of the holes are going to change. And that's why I originally drilled the holes smaller than I needed them. That's about it for this episode. In the next one, I will try and complete the job without destroying the piece of metal. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.